Okay, so I think the next one we'll do uh, is back references. So now that we have capture groups, something we would like to be able to do is a back reference. So I'd like to be able to write something like, you know, um, whatever, a something, right? So like a or o, and whatever I matched there, I would like to match again, right? So that right there is a back reference to the value of the first capture group. That's the kind of thing that we need. So let's go up in here, and we will add a class for back ref. And rinse. No, back ref. Too lazy. Okay, so what is a back ref? Well, it's neither a match single nor a match many. Um, it is, in fact, just going to implement iMatch directly. I guess what we could have would be to have like an ultimate match base, which is just an abstract class where we could put stuff, but that's no, not going to buy us anything here. So let's implement the interface, which we're going to need, and we'll need a constructor, public back ref, and group ID. Right? This is back reference to which group. So we will have a public read only. Um, int group ID and that's that and then in the constructor we'll say this dot group ID equals group ID just like that okay so what happens when I try to match a back reference well first things first so if it's not the case that um, the context Group has value. Wait, what was that other one? Group. Capture group has value. Oh, I need to go back and fix my my unification here. By group ID. Then obviously there's not much I can do here. Oh, sorry, let me flip over to context and fix that. Uh, this becomes group has value, capture value, group has value, kind of want to call this group value now. Uh, should I? Why not? It's probably horribly misleading, but whatever. Uh, okay, so if it does not have a value, then obviously can't match anything, nothing to do. Um, first order of business would be to say string val equals context dot um uh let's see group value for group id right give me back the string what am i missing here group has value of group id what's the problem context group value what did i do I see I did the exact same thing. This is why I shouldn't do this. All right, I'm going to try and start <laughs> not flip-flopping anymore, but no promises. Okay, so what would be something I can do? Well, first of all, if it's the case that my offset, sorry, context dot offset plus uh, val dot length, if that is greater than context.length, which is really just the length of the string, then I'm out of luck. All right, so there's, there's some basic cases. In fact, I'm going to do one thing here, and I'm going to just introduce a local here, and it's going to be called offset. That's totally fine. This is an int. Because uh, I'm going to use it again. So if... If that's too far, that's beyond the length of the context, then not even something I need to try doing. Okay, so then I guess the last thing I need to do is actually try and iterate through there. I equals zero. I is less than val.length. Uh, I plus plus. So I'll say if um, 
context dot mat string of offset the starting offset plus i is different from my blah 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 uh, val of i right they should go in lockstep then um, result equals false And I guess I haven't done anything. I could probably just return false here. Once again, I don't need that. So this will progress through the strings in lockstep. And as soon as we find an issue, then we're, we're done. So this, again, so I'm going to make one here called len. Again, this is an integer. And I'm going to cut it over here. And see, it's not smart enough to do that because I did it too late. OK. So why, why did I bother keeping this offset here? So if I've gone through all these motions and the strings have matched, then what I need to do, context.offset plus equals length, right? But the other thing I need to do, and if this works out, I guess I'm correctly matching. The other thing I need to do is think ahead a little bit and say, what's going to happen down here when I match next? When I match next, this back reference will have simply consumed a string of length len, right? Um, I need to undo that. <laughs> So I have one of two options. Either I need to save the length and I need to decrement it down here, or I just need to save the starting offset and reset it. So arbitrarily, I'm going to choose to push um, offset onto the stack, right? And then when we're backtracking, um, by the way, backtracking, let's think about backtracking into a back reference there are no other options. I already matched the entire thing. The only thing I need to do is make sure I restore state correctly. So for one thing, that's going to return false. And the other thing I can do is I can say context.offset equals context.pop and that ought to just flat out reset me. Okay. So, all right, well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. My tests here. I guess I'll keep some of the boilerplate. And this will be back ref test one. And what do I want to do? Let's do a back reference that matches. In fact, I will keep all of this again like that. And what I would like to do is then have var token equal to back ref. Uh, oh, no, I need a list. I got that wrong. Equals new list of a new iMatch array whose elements are capture group, right? Cap one and a new back ref to group one. And in fact, I'm going to introduce a local, and that's fine. That's going to be there. And so, what is this? This is literally the capture group A or AA slash one. Okay, so that is this guy. And that's backref test. All right, so let's see what should be happening here. I think it's obviously going to be the case that um, this can match the entire string. So I'm more interested in seeing what happens during the backtracking to make sure that it actually completely undoes what it needs to do. Uh, and gosh, I don't even know if we'll be able to see it really, but well, we'll try it. Should still work at least. We can try that. All right, let's run it. 
Not looking good. Why is this hanging? Am I stuck in a loop? I might be. Backcraft to... Oh, no I'm not. <laughs> I guess I should actually uh, ex execute the test. Exec test on that token on context. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so here we are. This is what we're matching. So the entire regular expression matched AA, which means, let's see, the first group matched uh, A here, 0 to 1. And then the back reference, right, would have been of value that. And it matched that successfully, so that worked out. And the whole thing is AA. So then we backtrack and we trigger this guy to reset and that should just undo those two. And then we backtrack into here. That guy resets, that list runs and captures two. And then the back reference now refers to those two values and we capture the whole thing and then we're good to go. So something that we can show would help show that this doesn't work is if I say AAA, for example. In this case, um, it is definitely the case that um, the back reference, you know, for this capture group is in fact reflecting the most current value. So the first time we had an A and then matched the A on the back reference and we're good. Second time we backtracked and group one contained AA just like last time. But then when we tried to match AA again, that pushes us off the end of the string. So that fails, which means the back reference fails. And then we backtrack again, no other options, and so we failed. All right, so that's kind of a nice nice way to see that. So it appears our back references are working. Um, something maybe a little more interesting to test would be to repeat this and ensure that this back reference is referring to the most recent capture from a particular capture group. Uh, because in this case, it only at most captured one time. So that we should be able to see by just wrapping this var greedy equals new greedy token of my back ref. Sorry, my token here. We'll call this um, RE. That'll be kind of my whole. It's not really my whole regular expression. God, I don't know what to call it. Yeah, this will be a bigger list, right? And a greedy token for the bigger list, and I want to match it at least once. And that's that. So then now this is greedily matching. And so here, now that we have capture groups, this is properly not capturing. Uh, but it is this thing repeated one or more times. Far bigger list. And now this is the token. And let's run it on the token and see if what we see makes sense. Again, this is a short string, so that's not really going to be great. We can go back to our AAA string. Sorry, AAAA string. And now we see, what do we see? First time through, we've got uh, matching a single character. Capture group one matched the A. And then ultimately... Oh, I'm sorry, then the back reference consumed um, 1 to 2, right? And then now group 1, which wraps all of that, has value A. Oh, no, I'm sorry, group 1 does not wrap all of that. Oh, see, this would be a good opportunity to actually make this a second capture group. Oh, shut up. All right, sorry, getting ahead of myself. 
So the first time it matched a capture group consumed the next piece, the most recent value of it was on repetition, where it was again A. And then, so that's zero. Oh, so let's see, the first option from the alternate, and then the one is going to be, um, I think my starting offset, right, from my back reference, then matched it again, and now the offset's three, and we matched it one time optionally, and that's from the greedy capture group. It is a little non-obvious which numbers those are, but uh, yeah, that's the nature of the nature of the game here. So let's see, we match next, and we backtrack into this, and it says, "Do you have alternatives?" Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, "Gosh, is this already sixty-minute video? Maybe it's not really worth going through all the motions here." Um, if you read through these very carefully and think about what's happening, it does in fact do what we think it ought to be doing. So to be abundantly clear, I will take this here and do the thing that I just said and really call that a capture group two. So I call this cap, cap one. What did I just hit? And then I will make my bigger list is that plus the back reference and then var cap 2 is a new um, group of bigger list and that's group id see now really we need to go fix this because this is actually group id 2 we have a back reference 2 and we have token which is a greedy Cap two, and now I need to be more correct here to say that, right? Because this is actually the second capture group, and I think I got those all lined up. Back reference, and then I will this, and it's going to be called cap two one temporarily. This is completely not worth it, but that's fine. Now this is capture one, and now I think everything's good. All right, so this should be sort of nice to see. Okay, so now you can see what happens is capture one actually completely captures the result of this plus its back reference, right? So capture one shows you which one of the two it picked. Capture two shows you that it did in fact grab both of them. So group one here has value AA, right? The way you expect, so zero to two and then two to four. And those are the two instances of this single capture group A, capture group A, and then a back reference to duplicate it, and that's that. Uh, in this case, group 1 has the value AA, group 2 has the value single A, that makes sense. And in this case, group 2 has AA, group 1 has AAA, because we did it in a different way, and then we're out of options. So that makes sense there. Uh, and again, this is one of the things where if you slowly add uh, A's to it, you can see it running through all these permutations, and it's sort of nice. And why that happens, I'll never know. Mm. Although I guess this guy does get exhausted here. Doesn't greedy cap one one too many times. Ah, that's right. So five actually makes sense here that I only capture four because uh, the one optional pass brings me out to AA. If I try and do it again, I can match the A, but then I can't repeat it. So that's kind of nice to see. So if we were to make this six A's, then we should see more. There we go. So there you go. So that makes sense. And then you start to get into this range here where trying to figure out what, what corresponds to what is just about possible, unless you were really, really careful about thinking about it. Um, so anyway, this is a ridiculously long video, so I'm going to stop this here, but I got to say now we have back references. That's pretty sweet.